This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. There's a lot of genuinely incredible things about Naruto as an anime, as a manga, as light novels. The characters are compelling, the fight scenes are incredible, the dialogue's awesome, and most of the characters are relatively well written. But there's also some things about Naruto which are less than great if we're being real. There's a fair amount of plot holes, the women aren't written as well as the men, and a lot of our favorite characters seem to die due to mysterious circumstances. A different name for these mysterious circumstances would be Chakra Disease. You see, some of the most interesting and compelling characters in the entirety of Naruto have been taken out by some mysterious bug that's never really explained. And when I did a video a couple days ago hypothesizing about how Hiruzen could have died, this was one of the theories that came up. But some people asked a very good, very logical question, what would happen in the Naruto universe if this mysterious circumstance never existed? So today we have, what if chakra disease never existed? Speaking of existence, this page wouldn't exist without each and every single one of you. So if you guys could go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the page, hit that noti bell, well, that would be incredible. And while we're on the topic of existence, guys, I have two other YouTube pages that exist. One is NC Gamer 23, where I play video games. And the other is Hammer's Collection, where I unbox massive anime statues that are sent to me by studios. Before we get into all that, guys, today we have our favorite reoccurring sponsor sponsoring today's video, Sakura Co. in Tokyo Tree. But we can only talk about one of these boxes at a time, so we're gonna open with Tokyo Treat. Tokyo Treat is a monthly subscription box for Japanese snacks. And not just any kind of Japanese snacks, the kind of Japanese snacks that an average Japanese household will be eating right about now. You see, because every month's box has a theme, and this month is Sugoi Summer. You see, it being August, that means it's summer vacation in Japan right now, which means that this box is themed with a bunch of summer-themed snacks. But here's the thing about Japanese treats, a lot of them are labeled in Japanese. And I can't read this, and I'm assuming the majority of you can't read this. But that's nothing to worry about, because we have a 24-page pamphlet that tells us everything we need to know about this snack, from its allergens to its backstory. So from this pamphlet, I've learned that this is a morning menu banana castella, which is a banana sponge cake filled with red bean, meant to be eaten in the morning. And it's 10 30 and i haven't eaten yet so let's go it smells like banana and it smells really good mm. oh my goodness i can't believe how spongy it still is and the red bean in there gives a nice little cut of sweetness to the sponginess of the cake. But enough about Tokyo Tree, we got a whole other box to talk about, Sakura Co. Now, Sakura Co. is also a Japanese monthly subscription box, but it's different from Tokyo Tree. While Tokyo Tree focuses on what's new and contemporary, Sakura Co. focuses on what's authentic and traditional. All the snacks that you'll receive in Sakura Co. are handmade by Japanese artisans and are meant to reflect how Japanese people have snacked for hundreds, if not thousands of years. But just like with Tokyo Treat, every month has a theme, and this theme is Okinawa Retreat. On top of snacks, Sakura Co. sends one kitchen object per box. This month's is chopsticks. But since we're talking about an Okinawa Retreat, let's go ahead and treat ourselves to a little something here. Just like with the Tokyo Treat Treat, I wouldn't know what this was if not for our pamphlet. Fortunately, our pamphlet tells us that these are Tanafukaru brown sugar cookies they look a bit like a donut hole to me but let's see if they taste the same mm, not at all a complex and a rich flavor incredibly dense oh my god it's delicious so what are you guys waiting for use code nchammer at checkout today to get five dollars off your first order of either tokyo treat or sakura co but guys don't just go type in sakura co or tokyo treat into your search bars use the link in either my description or my pinned comments to get access today Let's get the snacking. So chakra disease, what is it? We don't really know. All we know is it's taken out two of the most beloved and powerful characters in the entirety of Naruto. You see, this chakra disease has been seen in Kimimaru in the original Naruto and then Itachi in Shippuden. While some people might look at chakra disease as just a thing that happens, whether it's contagious or you're born with it and therefore it tends to afflict some people and those people just happen to be cool, while other people might look at chakra disease in the way that I look at it. Essentially, Kishimoto wrote some characters who he didn't know how to get rid of, but they had to die for plot convenience. And when you write two characters that are so insanely powerful that it wouldn't make a lot of sense that anybody in the show would be able to kill them, well, what do you do? Fake disease. And this is obviously a massive bummer because of the things that both Kimimaru and Itachi could have achieved should they have lived full lives. So today's video is meant to explore what would happen if they did exactly that, lived full lives. Fortunately, these two surviving doesn't impart as many changes to Naruto's storyline as a whole as Fugaku becoming Hokage, so I don't think this video will be 45 minutes, but who knows? So essentially the first thing that would differ between the original Naruto timeline and this Naruto timeline occurs with Orochimaru. You see, Orochimaru came across Kimimaru when he was five or six years old, after his clan had basically bum-rushed the Hidden Mist village to try to kill the Hidden Mist. You see, Kimimaru 
Maru's clan, the Kakia clan, who were long-term descendants from Kakia herself, were bloodthirsty, battle-hardened maniacs, whose only real enjoyment in life came in battle. However, because they were such bloodthirsty maniacs, they never really industrialized like many of the great ninja villages. And because of this, when they tried to bum-rush the Hidden Mist village, they lost and they were all killed. This is also because none of them had Shikatsunyaku. You see, Shikatsunyaku is the Kaguya clan's Keke Genkai, but very few people ever awoke to it. Kimimaru was the only person alive in the Kaguya clan at the time who had it. So after Kimimaru watched his clan get wiped out, he left the land of water. And eventually, Orochimaru happened upon him. You see, Kimimaru was wandering. He was lost. His clan had hated him because he had a specific Keke Genkai that made them all afraid of him. So even before his clan had died, he really never felt at home anywhere. Meeting Orochimaru, however, gave him purpose. Orochimaru began to train him and he made Kimimaru stronger in his own Keke Genkai. And even though Kimimaru was aware that Orochimaru was only training him so that one day he would become Orochimaru's host, he was okay with that because it was in service to Orochimaru. You see, Kimimaru lived his entire life to be in service to Orochimaru. Host or not? Not host, he was happy. However, one day Kimimaro either caught the chakra disease or it just awoke within him and he became bedridden. Now, Kabuto tried to keep him alive using medical ninjutsu, but because Kimimaro's body was so unique, him having Shikatsu Myaku, he wasn't able to receive proper medical treatment and Kabuto could only really extend his life. So, because Kimimaro had the chakra disease and he was basically bedridden, he couldn't be a host for Orochimaru. But in this universe, he can be and he would have been. We don't know when Kimimaro awakens to this chakra disease, but we can probably assume it was three to four years ago. You see, Orochimaru tends to try to get hosts that are between 13 and 15 years old. That's the age at which she was interested in having both Itachi and Sasuke as hosts. But Kimimaru died at 15. So I assume that if Kimimaru hadn't awoken to this chakra disease by the age of 13 or 14, Orochimaru already would have made him a host. None of this is super relevant, I'm just giving exposition. But regardless, in this universe, Kimimaru is now Orochimaru's host. And Kimimaru being somebody with a unique Kekagenkai who was also very strong could be Orochimaru's host for a long time. You see, the way Orochimaru's body switching works is that he can take over somebody else's body, but after about three years, their soul and their mind begin to fight back and reject him as a host. But if you take him on as a host willingly, there's technically no reason he would ever have to leave you because your brain and your soul wouldn't be fighting against him being there. And just remember, Kimimaru is very powerful. He has a Kike Genkai so powerful that the people from the clan that the Kike Genkai comes from were afraid of the people with the Kike Genkai. But something big happens with Orochimaru taking over Kimimaru Kimimaru as a host. Orochimaru no longer needs a new host for a long amount of time. You see, basically all Orochimaru has been looking for his entire life is a perfect host. He thought Itachi would be one, he thought Sasuke would be one, and he thought Kimimaru would be one. But the problem is he went 0 for 3. But hypothetically, if he had been able to use Kimimaru as a host, well then he's got 20 to 30 years where he doesn't need a new one. And because of this, Orochimaru never would have targeted Sasuke. Well, at least not yet. You see, obviously Orochimaru is curious about the Sharingan and wants its abilities. I mean, in this timeline, he had already made Shinuchiha. And by made Shinuchiha, I mean he had just grafted a bunch of Sharingans he made onto a person who could receive any foreign material onto their body. I'll remind you of what Orochimaru's general motivations are. He wants to unlock the secrets of every single ninjutsu, taijutsu, genjutsu out there. And because because of that, he needs immortality. But because he has to unlock everything, he also has to unlock the secrets of the Sharingan, which is actually why he tried to take Itachi on as his first perfect host. You see, we don't know the exact timeline here, but if you do the math that Kimimaru died at 15 and was probably taken on by Orochimaru when he was five or six, that gives you 10 years between Orochimaru meeting Kimimaru in the Konoha Crush Arc. Considering the fact that Sasuke was about 13 during the Konoha Crush Arc, that would mean he was three when Orochimaru met Kimimaru. Mind you, when Orochimaru met Kimimaru, he had already been cast out of the village because he was cast out of the village a couple months after naruto and sasuke were born okay so where am i going with all of this well sasuke was seven when the uchiha massacre happened which would mean that orochimaru had probably been out of the village for at minimum five years which would mean he had known kimimaru for about five-ish years there's essentially two ways this theory branches and they depend on when you believe kimimaru inherited a chakra disease you see because itachi and orochimaru meet in the akatsuki which would mean kimimaru was about 10 or 11 when they met you see the place where this theory branches is that orochimaru either wanted to take Itachi as a host because Kimimaru had already developed his chakra sickness, or Orochimaru wanted Itachi as a host simply because he was interested in the Sharingan. I'm gonna go with the latter, because it comes up later in my theory. So assuming that Kimimaru was still a good host for Orochimaru, he was still targeting people with the Sharingan, like Itachi. Maybe planning a backup host or something like that. Or simply just trying to recruit somebody so he can better understand the dynamics and the abilities of the Sharingan. Regardless of what was happening though, Orochimaru still had interest in people with the Sharingan. But since he has Kimimaru as a host, 
most in this universe, he would not be at the tuning exams. I mean, he would be at the tuning exams, but he wouldn't be there for Sasuke. He would be more focused on the Konoha Crush arc and less on requiring a new host. At this point, Itachi would have already defeated him, but he would already be in Kimimaru's body. And because Orochimaru wouldn't be looking for Sasuke, Sasuke never would have got the curse mark. You see, Sasuke gets the curse mark in the Forest of Death. When Orochimaru pulls up on Team 7 and gives Sasuke a chakra hickey. This is the first big change in our timeline because Sasuke not getting a curse mark has a lot of downstream repercussions. Pretty immediately too. You see, because Sasuke uses the curse mark during the Forest of Death arc, specifically when the Hidden Sound team beats Sakura and Rock Lee to a pulp while they're trying to protect Naruto and Sasuke who are unconscious. Inoshikacho and Neji and Ten Ten all pull up on this fight to assist against the Hidden Sound. Before any of them can really do anything of real substance, Sasuke stands up with his curse mark activated and proceeds to have arguably one of the coolest moments in OG Naruto where he literally just snaps a dude's arms by pulling him backwards. However, in this universe, that wouldn't have happened because Sasuke wouldn't have the curse mark. So Inoshikacho, Neji, and Ten Ten would have had to beat the Hidden Sound team together, which they could have done. At this point, Neji was just as powerful as Sasuke. Mix in Shikamaru, Choji, Ino, and Ten Ten, and you got a pretty good fight there. And I'm sure Rock Lee and Sakura could have helped as well. It arguably could have been a cooler moment than Sasuke breaking that dude's arm because it would have been so many Genin working together against the Hidden Sound. The rest of the tuning exams goes pretty much the same. Sasuke still wins his first round battle because he didn't use his curse mark in that. And then he still hits Garo with a Chidori because he didn't use his curse mark in that battle. And then the Konoha Crush arc pretty much goes exactly the same except for a couple of key differences. See, Sasuke still got smacked even using his curse mark against Gara, So it would still be up to Naruto to defeat Gara in the forest. So no real changes there. The big difference comes with Orochimaru versus Hiruzen. You see, because mind you, we talked about how Orochimaru wanted his hosts between 13 and 15 years old. So he's already in Kimimaru, which means on top of Edo Tensai, he has access to Shikatsumyaku from Kimimaru. Does this change his fight against Hiruzen? No, actually. While Orochimaru would be more powerful because he would have access to a Kekigenkai that allowed him to shoot bone bullets or pull his spine out of his back to use as a sword, he didn't know about the existence of Death Reaper Seal. You see, in his infinite ninjutsu knowledge, Orochimaru hadn't gotten to that jutsu yet, which is why he was surprised when he saw Hiruzen use it. It's also why Hiruzen had to explain it to Orochimaru. Orochimaru. But I can hear you in the back, you're saying, well, Nick, if Orochimaru has all these crazy upgrades, how is Hiruzen going to be able to catch Orochimaru to use Death Reaper Seal? It's like, we're still talking about Hiruzen here, and he still has Monkey King Enma. All Hiruzen has to do is grab Orochimaru. Because for those of you who haven't seen my video on how Death Reaper Seal works, the second Death Reaper Seal extends from the user onto the other person, it locks their body completely still. All Hiruzen needs, if he's willing to give up his life to use Death Reaper Seal, is to grab Orochimaru for two seconds, weave a sign, and then shoot a hand out of his chest. And while admittedly it would be harder to do this if he had Shikatsumiyaku, Hiruzen is willing to give his life here. I'm willing to bet he pulls it off. On top of this, Death Reaper Seal is invisible until it grabs your soul. So Orochimaru, with no prior knowledge of what Death Reaper Seal was, and also an invisible Shinigami shooting a very quick hand out out of Hiruzen's stomach and grabbing his soul, he doesn't have an answer for that, bone jutsu or not. However, the rest of the fight does go the same. The sword of Kusanagi flies through Hiruzen and he only can get Orochimaru's arms out. This is a bigger problem now than it used to be though, because it's not just Orochimaru who lost his arms in that battle, it's Kimimaru. Kimimaru who was supposed to be Orochimaru's perfect host. And Orochimaru's only been in Kimimaru two years max. This was his host for the next 35 years. And just like in the original timeline, Orochimaru has to return to his hideout with his arms bandaged and find a temporary host. And so he transfers over to a temporary host so he can kind of use his arms again. But Kimimaru is now dead. His perfect host is gone, which means that Orochimaru now has interest in Sasuke. However, Orochimaru's not in the position he was in the original timeline. Orochimaru just tried the Konoha Crush Arc. There's no way he can walk into that village also while being weakened. So he sends the Sound Village 4 to recruit Sasuke. And here's the thing. While technically the more you use a curse mark, the more subservient you are to the person who put that curse mark on you. That's real canonical lore based around the Heaven Seal. So one could argue that the only reason Sasuke ever left the village is because 
because of the curse seal making him more subservient to the will of Orochimaru Sasuke is still Sasuke so when he wakes up after the Konoha crush arc he would still be upset that Naruto is getting stronger than him curse mark or no curse mark he did still watch his brother kill his entire clan and therefore his entire want and will is to kill Itachi but if he saw somebody else who he saw as weak getting stronger than him that would still make him upset so he would take the sound four up on their deal after all Orochimaru did just survive a battle with the Hokage and Sasuke has spent his entire life hearing about how scary and powerful Orochimaru is so yeah he would go with the sound four and once again we would have a Sasuke retrieval arc but here's the thing Sasuke retrieval arc would go a bit differently Obviously, all of the fights that don't include Sasuke or Naruto would go exactly the same. There's quite literally no reason for them to go any different. However, Naruto and Sasuke's battle at the Valley of the End would go differently. Because mind you, Orochimaru wasn't strong enough to make this trip. We all remember what he looked like after he transferred into that new host. He was in a lot of pain. He couldn't do anything. Especially considering the fact that the Tsunade retrieval arc would also probably go exactly the same as it did in the original timeline. Sasuke hadn't left the village when the Tsunade retrieval arc was going on, so there's no reason it would be any different. But the Tsunade retrieval arc going exactly the same as it did in the original timeline basically just means that Orochimaru's arms never got fixed by Tsunade. So in a long-winded way, once again, he's not making the trip. Which means that Sasuke wouldn't have had the curse mark and therefore wouldn't be in that barrel undergoing that curse mark death and revival. Oh, and then obviously Kimimaru's dead already, so we wouldn't have to worry about Rock Lee and Gara fighting Kimimaru. But in the circumstance that Orochimaru just hadn't taken over Kimimaru yet for some reason and Kimimaru fought Gara and Rock Lee without a chakra disease, yeah, they'd both be dead. But that's not where this what if is going. Regardless, at the Valley of the End, it would have been Sasuke versus Naruto with his level one Jin Cloak. Sasuke would have lost that fight, like, emphatically. The only reason Sasuke won that fight is because he had a level two curse mark that allowed him to use an Onyx Chidori in fly. You take that level two curse mark away from Sasuke, Naruto is winning that fight. And then Naruto's dragging his ass back to Konoha. And I think honestly, this would have been a preferable outcome for me. I think closing the cycle of hate between Naruto and Sasuke without doing the stupid reincarnation thing would have been a better cohesive storyline for Naruto as a whole. Like have Sasuke go through his angst in Naruto and then try to escape to get to Orochimaru for more power. However, after battling Naruto and seeing that his hard work has actually made his power and that Sasuke could achieve that with his own hard work in the village would have been a better story for Sasuke. And then Shippuden could have just focused on Team 7 and Konoha versus the Akatsuki. Because there's a lot of times throughout Shippuden where I feel like Sasuke's storyline was kind of just shoehorned in. Like him becoming a part of the Akatsuki and trying to fight Killer B. The most important and interesting parts of Sasuke's storyline all have to do with Itachi. Their battle, finding out that he Itachi was a good guy trying to avenge Itachi. And all of those things could have been done if he was still in the village. So I think that if Sasuke had been brought back by the power of Naruto's friendship in that moment, it would have made much more sense than waiting five or six years. Like Sasuke trying to run away in that moment, it makes a lot of sense for Naruto to care about him as a friend. But six years later to still be chasing that man is a little over the top. And once again, I'll reiterate that it not only would have been more interesting for Naruto as a show, but more interesting for Sasuke. Because I think by admitting that Naruto has gained his power through hard work and then coming back to the village, Sasuke would be accepting Naruto as his true brother. Because when he does it in the war arc, it just feels so out of the blue. Sasuke's been trying to kill Naruto for six years now, and Naruto beats him in a fight once, and he's fine? Without years of stacked up wounds and battles between Naruto and Sasuke hurting their friendship, having one fight because Sasuke wants more power and he doesn't know how Naruto keeps tapping into all this extra power and then making that save their friendship makes way more sense. And then the time skip happens, but obviously the time skip is different because Sasuke is still in the village. But that makes sense because the best person to train Sasuke on Earth outside of Itachi is Kakashi. Yes, Orochimaru taught Sasuke a couple of new moves, but Kakashi was significantly better suited to teach Sasuke. And with Kakashi training Sasuke, Kakashi could have told him about the Mangiko Sharingan. And Kakashi, by training Sasuke in the way of the Sharingan, would be addressing his own grief over the loss of his best friend, who was an Uchiha, Obito. And it's an important moment for two of the most interesting characters in the show to open up and accept the things as they are. Even if you take the Sharingan out of the situation, Kakashi understands Sasuke as a whole. It's like the line Kakashi delivered to Sasuke when Sasuke says, what would happen if I killed everyone you loved? Kakashi says, that's not possible. All the people you're talking about 
are already dead. And yet we were robbed of Kakashi and Sasuke having a relationship because Sasuke ran away. But now we're in Shippuden and Shippuden looks significantly different. One, because Sasuke is still in the village and two, because Hachi's not necessarily on a timer. You see, it's important to note here that Itachi didn't die strictly of his chakra disease. Itachi had an incredibly powerful MS and an incredibly powerful Susano. But Itachi was also tasked with catching and killing some of the strongest people on earth. People that pushed even him to his upper limits. So very frequently, Itachi had to use Susano or Amaterasu or Tsukiyomi, which meant by the time that he was battling Sasuke, he was basically blind. And since we're talking about battling Sasuke, technically, that would still happen. The most interesting and important parts of Sasuke's timeline could still happen if he never left Konoha. Sasuke's core motivation wouldn't change. Until he found out that Itachi was a good guy, he would want to kill Itachi to avenge his clan. That's like Sasuke's whole personality. But he never had to leave the village to accomplish that end. He just thought Orochimaru was his fastest path to power to beat Itachi. When in reality, it was most likely Kakashi. But a lot of Shippuden looks the same. Akatsuki members are wiped out by Sakura and Granny Chio and my guy and all those people. Sasuke being in the village still doesn't change the fact that Team Asuma would go up against Kakuzo and Hidan. What Sasuke still being in the village does change though is who pulls up to the Itachi fight. You see, Sasuke pulls up to the Itachi fight pretty much alone, and Kisame holds the perimeter of the building so Itachi and Sasuke can fight. However, I genuinely believe that this circumstance would have been different if Sasuke had stayed in Konoha. While Sasuke was adamant about being the person who killed his brother, I don't think he would have hesitated to ask for help, at least in this universe, because this is the Sasuke who's realized that the path to power is not a shortcut. He probably sees Kakashi as a father figure and Naruto as one of his brothers, his real brother. And who knows, if he stayed in Konoha, he might actually have a romantic relationship with Sakura already. So I could see this universe of Sasuke asking for help from Team 7. Not to kill Itachi, but to act as support. If that would mean holding off Kisame or Tobi, that's probably what they would have to do. Also, Itachi could fight Sasuke, which by the way, would go significantly different than it went in the original timeline. You see, we have to unpack the reason as to why Itachi wanted Sasuke to hate him. Itachi made the very complexing choice to say that the only way that Sasuke would be strong enough to overpower the world and lead to a pacifist union would be to hate him so much that he would acquire strength in order to kill him one day. Because this is essentially all that Itachi wanted, his brother to be strong, specifically strong enough so he would be safe forever. To that end, Itachi's death isn't technically necessary. I believe in the original timeline, Itachi's death was tied into it because Itachi knew he had a very limited amount of time. But Itachi making Sasuke hate him in order to acquire power worked. So it's not the worst idea of all time. And in this universe, they would still fight. Because mind you, Itachi still wants to see how powerful Sasuke is. And if Sasuke can't beat him, he's technically not strong enough yet. And as Itachi and Sasuke fight, Itachi starts to realize that Sasuke has gained gained more than just individual strength. Itachi realizes that Sasuke brought his friends here and his friends bolster Sasuke's strength. Itachi realizes that this is where he was disconnected from a power standpoint. Itachi is a very individualistic person. However, when Itachi sees Sasuke working with Naruto or Kakashi or Sakura, he identifies that the friends Sasuke has made bolster his power much beyond that of Itachi's. And obviously his individual power is nothing to scoff at. Coming to the realization that his little brother has achieved exactly what Itachi wanted him to achieve, Itachi ends the battle. And Itachi tells Sasuke the truth about their clan, about the massacre, about Donzo, and also about the MS. You see, the truth of the MS comes out during the Itachi versus Sasuke fight anyway. Itachi essentially states that after you unlock the Mangiko Sharingan, it eventually leads to blindness because of overuse. And that's actually why Itachi died so young. Itachi's overuse of the MS would still be killing him, mind you. But without the chakra disease, he would have a little bit more time. Sasuke obviously doesn't believe Itachi at first. He didn't believe Obito at first. But Kakashi, who was also a member of the Root and also ran many missions with Itachi, is there, mind you. And Kakashi, while not informed of all these high-level details, is able to vouch that this is the kind of thing Donzo in the Root would do and convinces Sasuke to hear Itachi out, specifically to hear out Itachi's plan. You see, Itachi's plan to clear his name is to pull up on Donzo, just like Sasuke did. You see, Itachi was there after the massacre was done. He saw Donzo and his root members pull up to the Uchiha village. He even saw Donzo plucking the eyeballs out of the dead Uchiha, and he knew that Donzo had the Koto Amatsukame. If Itachi could either catch or kill Donzo, he could show Sasuke all of these Sharingans and prove that Donzo was the orchestrator of the Uchiha massacre and that Itachi only did it to save Sasuke's life. So together, Sasuke and Itachi 
level up on Danzo. And this time, the fight isn't ruined by Sakura failing to kill Sasuke three times. So the Five Kage Summit to address the Akatsuki problem happens, but this time it's Itachi who pulls up on Danzo. And mind you, the only reason Danzo has never laid a finger on Sasuke for the entirety of the Naruto timeline is because Itachi looked at him and said, if you ever lay a finger on him, I will leak all of the information I know about you and murder you personally. Danzo was much more afraid of Itachi than he was of Sasuke. So Danzo would do what he did when Sasuke pulled up to the Five Kage Summit flee and the other kage would do to itachi what they did to sasuke they would try to jump him except itachi isn't there to fight the other kage he's there to flush out donzo and once donzo is flushed out sasuke and team seven are waiting for him and to this point the itachi has fleed the other kage and pulled up behind donzo while team seven holds off the other kage which is arguably what they did in the situation anyways in the original timeline. Believe it or not, Sasuke and Itachi kill Donzo. And as Sasuke punches a final Chidori through Donzo's chest, his MS awakens as he's realized all of the hate his entire life he's directed at his brother has been misplaced, similar to how he awakens it in the original timeline. However, the difference here is that Toby is not involved in this battle. The only reason that Toby's involved in the original timeline is because after Sasuke collapses in his fight against Itachi, Toby takes him and takes him to his hideout. And then Toby and Sasuke are on the same team, and that's when Sasuke joins the Akatsuki. But since we're talking about the Akatsuki, they play a very important role here. You see, now that Donzo's evilness has been revealed to all of the Kage, Team 7, Itachi, and Sasuke, Itachi is forgiven. He can return to the village. And while it's incredible that he's back, I'll remind you, he's been spamming his MS for years. At this point, after fighting Donzo, he can barely see. But also, Itachi has read the stone tablet in the Uchiha hideout. He knows taking a family member's eyes grants you eternal MS. So Itachi tells Sasuke he can't fight the Akatsuki unless he achieves this, and that he would recommend the same for Sasuke. Fortunately, there's a way they can achieve this without taking each other's eyes. You see, in actuality, we don't know how EMS is achieved, logistically. There's two camps. One camp says you have your original eyes, and then you take your family member's eyes, and you just squish them into your original eyes, and then you get EMS. And then there's the other camp that says you take your family member's eye, you take your eye out, and you put the new eye in, and then I guess you can just throw your old eyes wherever you want. Technically, I subscribe to the second theory. So I think there's technically no reason that Itachi and Sasuke couldn't just swap eyes and both get EMS. But that is the less popular of the two theories, so I'm gonna explain it like the first theory is the correct one. You see, Itachi knows Obito was there on the night of the massacre. He was literally the one who recruited him. And Itachi knows, just like Donzo, Obito was collecting all of the Sharingans of the Uchiha, specifically to make sure that Donzo didn't get them. Which means that Itachi knows that Obito hideout he has every single Uchiha Sharingan even the Sharingan of his mother and his father so Itachi tells Sasuke that they have to break into Obito's hideout to steal their parents eyes back and oh by the way this is just kind of an aside but Jiraiya is still dead he dies like three episodes before Itachi I'm sorry nothing from the new timeline would save him shit happens however on top of the fact that they need EMS Itachi knows that Tobi claims to be Madara Uchiha and is technically the leader of the Akatsuki so Konoha leading a raid on Tobi's hideout which Itachi would know the location of makes sense for a couple of reasons. One, they want EMS and two, they want to get rid of an important member of the Akatsuki who without Sasuke being an annoying and distracting subplot line are the big baddies that we can concentrate on completely. So Team 7, Itachi, and Sasuke go to Obito's hideout. By the way, everything that's happening with Naruto is like still happening, like the pain arc and sage mode and beating Nagato, because that was pre-Donzo's death, therefore pre-Five Kage Summit. It pretty much happened while Sasuke and Itachi were fighting. So maybe like only Kakashi, Sakura, and then one other person would go out to help Sasuke in his fight against Itachi while Naruto was fighting against Pain in the village. And that would most likely be because the elders in Donzo wouldn't want to send Naruto out to Itachi where he could have the Nine Tails pulled out of him. So they would force him to stay in the village, but that's when Nagato pulls up and then you get that fight. It's just now Kakashi and Sakura aren't in the village, but it's not like either of them really pulled their weight in that fight. So it doesn't matter. But now that Donzo's dead, Tsunade's back awake and all of Team 7 is back together with Itachi now added, a raid is approved. Itachi leads all of them to Obito's hideout where the group goes up against Obito. And and while Itachi isn't much of a help because he can barely see, Kakashi, Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura are able to push Tobi into a corner. Specifically, this is the opportunity that Kakashi 
gets to see that Toby might be Obito. While fighting as things phase through Toby, Kakashi gets a glimpse of a Sharingan. And as Obito is retreating, Kakashi realizes who it is. However, since Obito has retreated, they now have access to all of the Sharingans he had in his hideout. So Sasuke and Itachi are able to acquire their parents' Sharingan. And just like that, they both awaken to EMS, and Itachi's eyesight is repaired. Smash cut to the war arc. Everything pretty much goes the same. What do I mean? I mean, the Akatsuki still got all nine of the tailed beasts, technically. I mean, they used a tentacle from Gyuki and just threw the Gold and Silver Brothers in there, but whatever, it works. But what's cool about the original timeline is that Itachi was pretty much there for a large part of the war arc to help Sasuke. And even though Itachi in this universe has EMS and probably a full Susano, I would say that an EMS full Susano Susano Itachi would be just about as powerful as an Edo Tensai Itachi. This is because an Edo Tensai Itachi would have infinite chakra and therefore no chakra disease. Also, with infinite regeneration, he could use his MS as much as he wanted. Also, he technically has invulnerability. You can't kill him without sealing him. While those two versions of Itachi would be differently powerful, I believe their power scaling would be about relative. So the fight in the cave between Sasuke, Itachi, and Kabuto would go probably exactly the same. Mostly because Itachi and Sasuke couldn't kill Kabuto. They had to put him in Genjutsu. Because if you kill the caster of Edo Tensai, all of those Edo Tensai people that they just brought up just get free reign forever. So Itachi would still have to use Izanami. So he would just have one eye. But that's not that big of a deal, and I'll tell you why in a second. After putting Kabuto in an infinite loop and having him undo Edo Tensai, Sai Itachi calls down the raven that's been following him his entire life. You see, this raven is dead in the original timeline, but that wouldn't be necessary because of these changes. You see, Itachi put the raven in Naruto, and this raven has the Kodo Matsukame. This raven was supposed to react to Itachi's eyes, because Itachi knew that Sasuke would take his eyes to get EMS. So Itachi was banking on Naruto seeing Sasuke, and then the raven coming out of Naruto's mouth and using Kodo Matsukame on Sasuke to make him loyal to Konoha forever. However, since he's just loyal to Konoha now, that technically wouldn't have had to happen. So whether or not the Raven was flying around following Itachi like it did before he put it in Naruto, or if it was in Naruto, Itachi would call the Raven. He would then replace his blinded eye with Kodo Matsukame, giving him closure with Shisui, essentially making Shisui a part of him, a part of him he would carry in his physical body the rest of his life. Now, would this eye still have EMS? I, I don't, nobody knows. But let's assume, yes? By the way, since I brought up Kodo Matsukame, I can hear everybody in the comments yelling, well, then what about Donzo's Kodo Matsukame? Well, when Donzo died, he plucked out the Kodo Matsukame from his face and crushed it so Obito wouldn't get it. So I'm gonna assume he would do that in this timeline as well. Hashtag Petty King. God, I love that man. But Itachi's Kodo Matsukame eye is gonna come in handy very soon. You see, obviously Sasuke and Itachi are nowhere near the battle. Madara is off destroying the Shinobi Alliance by himself right now. But a lot of the war arc plays out the same. Obito gets the Ten Tails, gets the Renin Gun, on. He's destroying everybody with the sword of Nobuko. The difference is here that Itachi is still a key player. And instead of Naruto Takno Jutsuing Obito into being a good guy again, after Kakashi and Obito return from their fight in the Kamui dimension, Itachi uses Kodo Matsukame on Obito to make him realize the error of his ways, making him empathetic to what Kakashi had to do to Rin and the fact that it was her choice. And showing him that the era and the way of the ninja is not broken, he's just angry at a system that he couldn't find the right way to change. However, still significantly weakened from all of his fights, the Ten Tails rejects him, and Black Zetsu holds him down. This allows Madara to steal the Rinnegan from him just like he did before. And now Madara is the Ten Tails Jinchuriki and everything's going wrong again. And then the war arc goes very similarly again until Madara and Mike Guy fight, or Mike Guy kills Madara. Why? What events in this alternate universe made Mike Guy kill Madara? None of them, it's just what should have happened. And then obviously Madara's dying body is taken over by Kagi and Kakia sends. Obviously Tachi tired from using Izanami and Kodo Matsukame in the same day is pretty much too tuckered out to fight Kagi. So that battle goes almost exactly the same. Naruto and Sasuke do a little high five on Kagia and she gets sealed into her own dimension's moon. The only difference is after Kagi is sealed, Sasuke is not like, now I get to kill everybody. Because we closed that circle five years ago when it made sense. Instead, they're all just stoked. They sealed to God, the tail beast get released, Naruto gets all of Kurama and they head back to their respective villages. However, after the war arc, 
is different. You see, after the war closes, Tsunade steps down as Hokage. Tsunade had seen enough as Hokage. And by the way, she did a fantastic job. She is arguably one of the best Hokages in the history of the show. Oh, but you sent Jiraiya to her death. That was literally, it was the right call. She didn't know he was gonna have to fight Nagato. It's not her fault. He's bad at spying. Regardless, the person who becomes Hokage after Tsunade does change. You see, Kakashi never wanted to be Hokage. I think we all know that. It's just not his personality. He loves Konoha and he loves his team, but he just wants to read his porn in peace. And who can blame him? No, in this timeline, it would be Itachi who stepped up as Hokage. One, he's the correct age. Being about 19-ish or 20 when the war arc ends, and two years later when Tsunade steps down after the fourth great shinobi world war, he'd be about 22, 23. Roughly the same age Minato was when he became Hokage. Also, there is quite literally nobody in the history of Konoha who has sacrificed more than Itachi for Konoha. Not to mention, he's a genius and a natural leader. And in this timeline, also a very important player in the fourth great shinobi world war. And not to mention, in Uchiha becoming Hokage would be a closing of the dark chapter of the Uchiha. It would be a symbolic passing of the torch, an apology to a clan destroyed by this village. And he would probably serve as Hokage as long or longer than Kakashi did. You know, just long enough for Naruto to get old enough to take it over. And both he and Sasuke would be able to start repopulating the Uchiha clan. Now, as to who we touch, he marries. I can't, I, I, I can't think of anything good. I mean, he had a girlfriend before, but he put her in a genjutsu that made her see their entire lives together in like one millionth of a second. And then she like snapped out of the genjutsu and said thank you to him for being so nice. And then he, you know, stabbied. So like, was he ready to love again? I don't know. Legitimately, the only woman I could think of was Anko. Also got black hair, also been victimized by evil people, also likes wearing mesh t-shirts. I don't know. I couldn't think of anybody age appropriate. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think Itachi and Anko make sense? Tell me in the comments below and tell me if you guys liked this what if. I know I did. I actually really enjoyed doing these. Finding the logistical points that I can speak on and how they'll differ between differing universes is actually a lot of fun. And while you guys are down there in that comment section please for me like this video subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell i know i said this wasn't gonna be 45 minutes but looking like it's gonna be about 45 minutes i don't write scripts